Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share uh, a few dreams that I was given last night along with a message that I believe uh, that the Holy Spirit would have me to share with you. A caution uh, for us as the church today. Uh, how we need to really be careful not to be baited in uh, to useless word battles. Uh, how we have to really guard our peace, guard our minds, our thoughts. The enemy is out for blood, church, and he is going to use anything he can uh, to distract us and to cause us maybe to be a distraction to others and to even lead others in, in a wrong way, down a wrong path, if, if the enemy can do that. So we have to be guarded, church. We have to be wise so that we're not outwitted by him. And that's what I believe the Lord showed me in a dream last night, um, how the enemy is trying to outwit us and, and how we have to be very cautious right now. So in the one dream, the first dream I had, I was standing on one side of a street. It was like a city street and there was uh, there were some people next to me and then there was there were two women on the other side of the street and they were uh, lesbians. And this man next to me, okay, which I'm gonna tell you right now, the side of the street I was on was symbolic of Christianity. The other side of the street was symbolic of LGBTQ. So the man next to me is yelling at these women. These women are yelling back. It's just this word battle going on between them. And then they're about ready to engage in some type of a physical fight. At that point, I stood up and I said in a very sarcastic way, well, that was entertaining. And then I turned to leave, All right? Now I'll get back to that, what I believe the Lord is showing us through that dream in a minute. But the, after that, I had another dream. And in this dream, I was sitting in a circle with about 10 or 15 people. There was a man who was leading, it was something like a Buddhist teaching he was doing. And the man made this statement, he said, man came from woman well i immediately corrected him and i said no man and woman both came from god like god created both of them well the man did not like that i spoke up and and that i corrected him or, or anything that i was even talking and interrupting as i felt like he perceived it and so at that point as i saw that he was upset i went to apologize and i said i was sorry and then he jumped in and he said well you should be like for interfering with his teaching and I said no I said I'm not sorry that I told you the truth and then I went on to explain that because I was there that they had an opportunity to come to Christ right these people in this group and him so all right this this second dream is the real battle right the second dream shows how there are people claiming to have truth out there in other religions, leading people astray, all right? Uh, and that is where we come in. Because church, we're still here, there's still time for people to come to Jesus during this age of grace. And that window is closing, but while we're here, there's hope for them. So we need to stay engaged in that. But the first dream, this demonstrates Okay, in the dream I referred to this word battle going on between this Christian next to me and, and the lesbian women uh, as entertainment, all right? And that's important because what I see going on and what I believe the Holy Spirit is showing me is happening is a form of, dis of entertainment which is intended to be a distraction to the church. And here's why I say that. If a person is interested in truth, okay, they can hear the truth. They can find the truth. They can come to a person who they know is a believer in Christ and ask the truth. But if a person is not interested in truth, then it is not our job to push truth on other people. It is not our job to engage in word battles with other people. Uh, that is actually very destructive. In fact, Paul in 2 Timothy 2.14 warned uh, he said, remind the believers of these things, charging them before God to avoid quarreling over words, which, which succeeds only in leading the listener to ruin, or in the King James it says subverting. And that in the Greek literally is the word catastrophe, where we get our English word catastrophe. 
and that means to overthrow or apostasy. Word battles, the enemy knows very well, are very destructive, all right? And to those people listening, when a Christian is engaging in a word battle, uh, more than likely isn't going to see the spirit of love, the spirit of kindness, because the Christian is trying to prove something. And that's not what we're here for, church. We're here to speak the truth in love and to allow the Holy Spirit to do his job, uh, which is to lead people into a place of where they feel that conviction and repentance. But some might say, well, Melissa, the, the LGBTQ are invading the church. And to that, I would say, no, they are not invading the church. I do see videos from time to time of a drag queen behind a pulpit or somebody who is in the LGBTQ in, in these uh, buildings. But you have to understand, church, that's just a building. And, and they can infiltrate a building, all right? The true church is the body of Christ. Every remnant member of the body of Christ, the born-again believer. In 1 Corinthians 3, 16, Paul says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if you go to Romans 8, 9, Hebrews 3, 6, Ephesians 2, 20 through 22, 1 Peter 2, 5, these all confirm, church, we are the temple, all right? We are the, the place that God chose to dwell, all right? He doesn't dwell in buildings anymore. He dwells in his people. And this is important because we have to make that distinction between the building and between the true church and ensure that even though somebody who doesn't walk in truth can invade a building, don't let them invade your mind. Don't let them invade and steal your peace. This is what the enemy is trying to do. If you're a part of a fellowship where this is happening, you know that a fellowship has gone apostate if the leadership embraces that. If the leadership embraces any form of sin, then you are in danger because as someone who has placed yourself under that umbrella of a man, whatever that man or woman uh, is willing to embrace is being pushed down onto you. So you have to be careful who you uh, put yourself under, if you're going to put yourself under another human being and and separate yourself from any anything that isn't of God. Of course, most of you who've been um, a part of my ministry for, for these past 10 years or so know that I uh, came out of organized religion a long time ago, but I'm not here to bash the, uh, the structured church. I'm just here to, to warn you that if, if somebody is embracing anything that is not of God, that isn't biblical, uh, that's in leadership within a fellowship you're in, that you're, you're at risk, okay, of being impacted by, by that whatever false doctrine, wrong spirit, a demonic spirit can come in through these leaders who, who would open themselves up to an, a kundalini spirit or, or any kind of evil spirit that is not of God. So recognize church that the building is the building and yes, you can have somebody who doesn't embrace truth come into these buildings, but you, the born again believer, you're the church and it's up to you to guard your, your mind, your thoughts, your mouth, your words, and ensure that, that you are walking in light, you are walking in truth and in love, and that if anybody hears words proceeding from your mouth, that it isn't gonna lead them to ruin or to subversion, but it will lead them into truth and light in Christ Jesus. The enemy, he is out for blood and he is going to use anything he can to distract us in these last hours from fighting the good fight of faith and truly helping those who have a heart to come to Jesus to, to get there while we are still here. That's our job. That's what we're here for. Be careful not to get sidetracked. Be careful not to get distracted by these word battles, arguments, that do not lead to anything good. I encourage you, church, stay focused on the Lord. Stay in that secret, quiet place with Him, seeking to hear from Him, seeking to draw closer to Him. Because in these dark hours, church, 
we are desperate and we need Jesus with every fiber of our being. We need him. Without him, we are helpless, the Bible says. The Bible tells us that we are weak. We are weak, but he is strong. And with him, all things are possible. So I hope and I pray that this message does encourage you, that it blesses you. Please, as with any message, take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for a confirmation, church. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.